Okay, so today what I thought I would show you how to do is to make just some simple cupcakes and we're gonna make them Easter theme. So step number one, we are gonna weigh our caster sugar into our large bowl. So I've just got my large bowl here and all I'm gonna do is just zero by scales and make sure that it's on grams when you're doing it, okay? So my scales here, they have unit and I would click that until there's a little G that comes up. Most scales should be the same. Um, so if you just make sure you follow that really. So, I've just got my caster sugar here and I'm just gonna carefully pour that in and I'm gonna put in 100 grams of caster sugar. grams I've got in there so I can put my caster sugar to the side now and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my marge now you can use marge or butter just whatever you've got in your house just butter what I would suggest you do is leave out the fridge for a little bit before you start because it's quite hard to cream otherwise if it's been in the fridge just because it's so solid okay so I'm just using stark marge here just buy this in Tesco or Asda just because it's quick and uh, good for baking so I'm just going to zero my scale again now and I'm gonna add in a hundred. both my marge and caster sugar. I'll show you there just now. And all I'm going to do is use the back of my wooden spoon to cream both the marge and caster sugar together. Now, the reason for doing this is it helps to um, add air into your hot cupcakes and make them nice and light and fluffy, okay? So you're wanting to be pushing that around the bowl just with the back of your spoon. If some of it gets stuck to the back of your spoon, just scrape it off. And you're gonna continue going until it becomes paler in color and you've got a nice smooth paste. Okay, so I've now creamed together my butter and margarine and it should just look something a bit like this once you are finished. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in both my flour and my egg. So, to add in my flour, I'm going to put my large bowl back on the scales. And then if you have a sieve at home that you can use, don't worry too much if you don't have a sieve, but sieving your flour just helps to add extra air to make sure your cakes are light and fluffy. So I'm just gonna balance my sieve on top of my large bowl there. And then I have my self-raising flour. And again, I'm just gonna zero my scales. And then I'm going to measure in 100 grams of self-raising flour as well. Okay. Then just lightly with the side of my hand, I'm just gonna use it to tap my sieve and I'm just gonna sieve my flour into the large bowl with my creamed sugar and marsh. Any kind of little lumps that you can't get through, all you need to use is just a metal spoon just to push them through the bottom of the sip. So I'll just get one of those. So just use a spoon and just use that to push it through. And then your sip can go to the side. You're now finished using that. So our next part is we're going to add in two eggs. So when you are cracking your eggs, we're gonna do that in a separate bowl. Now this is just in case any of the shell gets in so it doesn't get in all your cake mixture and you're unable to get it out. We're just gonna do it into a small bowl first of all. So for this, you're gonna need a round bladed knife. And then all you're gonna do for me is hold one egg in your hand and you're gonna tap it three times. Now your egg should have now cracked and then all you are going to do is use your fingers to pull that apart and put your egg into the bowl. Once you've done this, your eggshell can go into the bin. And then you're gonna do the exact same with the next one. So I'm just now gonna put that shell into the bin and I'm gonna give my hands a quick wash. If 
you were to have got any shell in with your cracked egg, all you would do is just use a metal spoon and you would just use that to help you guide the shell out to the side of the bowl. Try not to put anything else in there that will then crack the yolk because it then makes it much harder for you to be able to get retrieve the shell that you've dropped into the egg yolk. Okay, so now that I've cracked both my eggs, I'm just going to use that knife that I used earlier. Sometimes you could use a fork as well, but because I've got the knife out just now, I'm just going to use that easiest. So I'm just going to use that to mix my eggs up and just break the yolks up. Then I can just put this in my sink. Then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the scales to the side now because that's going to finish with them. You're going to add that egg in with your flour and creamed sugar and large mixture. Okay, and now all we're going to do is just combine all of this together. So again, using your wooden spoon, just making sure you're getting right round the edge of the bowl. And you're just wanting to mix it until all of the flour is combined and there's no lumps. Okay, so I've now just got two metal spoons and all I'm going to do is use these to help me to put my mixture into my cases. So what I would always recommend doing is taking one kind of big rounded spoonful and then very carefully you're just going to use the other spoonful to slide that off into the case. Now ideally you want to be filling these cases about half full, not any more than that or they can overflow in the oven and they'll take much longer to cook. I'll bring you flowers in the pouring rain From this day until the day we throw it all away Let's talk about it, cause I can't go without it Your love, it means so much to me Can't you see, right here I'll always be And by the way, can I say that I am here to stay Right here beside you, I will never deny you my love You're everything to me can't you see? I'll give it to you on selfish need Because I need you so Oh baby And I will never ever let you go I'll bring you flowers in the pouring rain Living without Okay, so we're just going to wait out our ice and sugar just now We're going to wait out 200 grams of ice and sugar So I'm just going to zero my scales Okay, so we're just going to add 75 grams of marge into our ice and sugar now. Just going to make sure my scales are zeroed. Okay, so this is what your finished buttercream should look like. You can see that it's much paler in colour and it's nice and light and fluffy now. So now I'm going to show you how to make your own makeshift piping bag so we can make our cakes look really effective. Okay, so if you have just a little kind of food bag, this is just one that I have in my house that's just from Ikea, but it could just be one that ties at the top or an open top one. It doesn't have to be one that seals. And then all you're going to do is just, if you have something round, I've just used a measuring jug here, but just anything similar, you could just place the bag inside to hold it open. Then all you're going to do is just use your wooden spoon to help you get all the butter ice in and then I just want you to shake it. Try and avoid the top sides of the bag so you don't get them covered in ice in and you want your ice in to go right down to the bottom of the bag. And then what you can also do is just push the spoon in and just use the bag to help you slide it in. Okay, so now what you should have is your kind of food bag that's full and then all I want you to do is just kind of make sure it goes to one corner. So use your hands just to slide it down. Put this a bit closer so you can see it. Okay, and then all you're going to do is just twist that at the top. Okay, and there we have our little icing bag so I'm just going to leave that in. So now we've got our little makeshift piping bag that we just made and you should have a little corner bit here. So 
all you're going to do is just use a pair of kitchen scissors and you're just going to cut that now you don't want to make it too big so i'm probably going to cut it about a centimeter up and then what you should be able to see now is i've just got a little i don't know if you can see that very well a little circular hole there then making sure that your cakes are cool enough to start piping all you're going to do is keep it held tight at the top so twisted one hand here and one hand here and then you're just going to take one cupcake at a time and you're just going to go around in a circular motion and you're just going to keep going around and there we go and that's your first ice cake and then we'll just do the rest of them <laughs> And then all you're going to do now is you should have a nice little packet of mini eggs and then all I'm going to do is just place a couple, try to mix up the colours on the top of each cupcake. Okay, and that is your finished little cupcake. Can't you see right here?